opens a transparent trading area for cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody and welcome to my July blog here from Strasbourg. This is going to be the last one of this, this parliamentary session, not quite this year, we've still got a few months to go. Um, it's been a very hot and sticky time here, both weather-wise and politically. And I'm rushing a little bit this morning because I'm about to go in and listen to the Prime Minister of Greece, Mr Tsipras, who's going to come and tell us I hope he's going to come and tell us why he thought it was appropriate to send his finance minister to Brussels yesterday with a few bullet points scribbled on some hotel notepaper as opposed to a proper and um, <laughs> correct and new revised and workable proposal for how Greece is going to extricate itself from its current uh, system situation. I have every sympathy with the Greek people. Uh, I've, like you, I've seen all the, the photos and the TV interviews from Athens. I don't know if you saw it, but I was particularly struck by the mother of the asthmatic child who was distraught because it wasn't even that she didn't have the money herself, it was simply that she was not able to buy his inhaler medicine uh, in Athens because it was impossible for uh, Greek companies to, to import based on uh, they couldn't get credit. Uh, the situation there is clearly untenable in many, many ways, and it ta I, have no, I take no pleasure in that. But I do find it just a little bit galling when I listen to Greek politicians because they seem to believe that having been part of the growth that has come from the Eurozone, that uh, they don't have to in any way pay the price. Now, I'm all for coming up with a settlement and a way in which to deal with it, but it seems that we've had three or four bites at that cherry and they're not really coming through. So I'm going to be fascinated to see what Mr. Sipras has got to say. Um, I don't really want to preempt it because, of course, anything I say now uh, will be consigned to history probably as a complete uh, misinterpretation of the situation because better brains than I have uh, been making all kinds of predictions and they've been proven again and again to be wrong. So here in Strasbourg the buzz is of course all about Greece. Uh, last time if you remember we talked a lot about immigration and um, the plight particularly of Africans crossing from Libya and Tunisia to Italy and Sicily. That seems to have gone off the agenda a little, but of course it's still very, very apposite and we should still be dealing and talking about it and dealing with it. Not least because I have to tell you in the last week, using Eurostar and coming through that tunnel, we've had so many disruptions um, as a result of the way in which the French authorities, and I don't blame them particularly, I think they have their own difficulties, but the French authorities have been dealing with the problems around the Channel Tunnel, that this for, for we Brits here is, is a huge issue and one that we want to get to the bottom of. And it's a shame really that we are reaching the end of the parliamentary term and, and that August will be uh, time off. And I do worry, uh, as we all know, August in France is, is a holiday. Um, I do worry about what advantage might be taken at that channel crossing during that time. And as a parliamentarian here, having that uh, hiatus, having that time off, I'm looking forward to it on a personal basis, but I think it couldn't come at a worse time actually, because there are so many issues that we need to be dealing with. But just to finish on a positive note, I've just had a breakfast uh, policy-based breakfast, looking at how Europe can go forward in terms of making proper evidence-based, scientific evidence-based policy in the future and how we might be able to change the way in which we evaluate that, the way in which we use it to make better regulation. And this is absolutely vital. Um, we have some real cultural differences in Europe. It's one of the pleasures of doing this job but it's also one of the problems. And if one illustration of that is there's a phrase in English called, we, we use, revolving doors, which effectively means um, if you work for one institution, you leave that job and you immediately walk into another um, doing similar jobs. So, for example, you're a scientist working in a large chemical company, you leave that company and you're then working for the European Food Safety Authority. And you are then 
seen to be compromised because of your connections with industry. And here, that's used as a pejorative. That phrase is a definite negative. Whereas I think uh, for we British Conservatives, that phrase actually could be seen as, as a positive. Because if you're going to be working, advising politicians and working in a regulatory authority, isn't it a good idea if you come from uh, a background which is acknowledged as being highly skilled and highly valued? And if that happens to mean that you work for industry, is that necessarily a bad thing? Or can we trust you when you make your you make a statement, you make a declaration that you worked for industry, but that is no longer affecting your decision making on a policy basis. So that was the thrust of the breakfast. It was very, very useful. We had some great uh, interventions from industry and from the Commission. And uh, I hope to take that sort of issue forward in the future. So happy summer to you all. Uh, it's pretty hot. Uh, I hope it's going to be a good one. And I look forward to speaking to you again in September.